The next question comes from Sandra. Here's what Sandra asks. Hey, Zach, I have a question for you. I've been following what you teach, and I know your breathing mechanisms, but something has been bugging me. Uh Uh-oh. When we make an inhalation, our ribs rotate externally, and this is related to spinal extension. But, but, when we inhale, our spine goes into kyphosis too. Is it possible that extension and kyphotization, that's a dope word, happen at the same time? What am I missing here? Thank you for your time. Amazing question, Sandra. I answered this in the past, but I think I can answer it better now. One, two, I couldn't remember what debrief I did it then. You know, it's kind of like, I'm kind of like Mad Lib. I don't usually, well, actually, that's not true. I do listen to them afterwards, but I don't remember the content. Um, but, but here's what's going on. The answer has to do with location, location, location in the thoracic spine. And when we're talking location, we have to talk about the function of the intercostal muscles. We have to ask ourselves, selves, when I take a breath of air in, what intercostal muscles are active? What are concentrically contracting in order to help me pull air in? This has to do predominantly not so much with the actual muscles, but the location of those muscles. So it's the, uh, the intercostal muscles have actually been a little bit of a contention point in anatomy in terms of what their role is. But the OG himself, Andre Detroyer, laid out a pretty comprehensive article that I'll link in the show notes um, that you should definitely check out because it goes into the function of these intercostal muscles and when they work. The two areas that we have to focus on when we're discussing inhalation are the sternal intercostals, and these are called the parasternal intercostals, and the dorsal rostral intercostals, which is, I believe, the upper six ribs. Those are the two intercostal locations that are active during inhalation. They help you pull air into the chest wall. Now we have to ask if those two muscles are active. If I got stuff on the lower front half of the sternum being concentric during inhalation, I got stuff in my upper back being concentric during inhalation, what is going to be the net motion happening in the thoracic spine? If the parasternal parasternal intercostals are concentric, that's going to cause the pump handle action at the sternum to occur. What the pump handle action is, is the rib cage moving anteriorly and superiorly during inhalation. If I move the rib cage anteriorly and superiorly during inhalation, the location of the spine on the opposite side of the body, aka the posterior aspect of the rib cage, is going to shift. So what will happen is you'll have the the front ribs moving outward and upward, but then there will be a reduction of the thoracic curve as I tip outward and upward. That's where you're going to get some degree of thoracic extension in the lower part of the rib cage. So as I breathe in, anterior superior action of the front of the sternum, reduction of thoracic curve in the lower part of the rib cage. And that would be, uh, by lower part, I'm saying where the true ribs most likely attach. So there's one piece. But we have this other situation happening in the dorsal rostral intercostals because those muscles are also active during inhalation. And these are like the upper four to six ribs. When those muscles contract and I breathe in, you get posterior and superior movement of the rib cage. So if I have posterior and superior movement of the rib cage, you will actually see some degree of an increase in kyphosis in the thoracic spine in that location, which would create a relative flattening on the anterior aspect of the body. These two things under normal circumstances happen simultaneously. Now, does that mean that I got like this huge kyphotic curve in the upper back and then I'm, you know, extended AF in the lower part of the thoracic spine? No. 
These are all relative movements happening at the same time. And realize these are not big movements. In, in sum, when all of those actions happen simultaneously in this wondrous fashion, you get circumferential and multidirectional expansion of the rib cage in total. And you'll see this when you have people do exercises and they can keep the stack. When they breathe in, you just see the whole rib cage get bigger in all directions. And then when they exhale, it gets smaller in all directions. But if we look at the micro movements in the respective areas, that is what you see that leads to that circumferential expansion. To summarize your great question, Sandra, yes, you do get a combination of uh, reduction of thoracic curve and increase in thoracic curve when you breathe in. Lower part of the front rib cage is going to be more active during inhalation, which reduces the thoracic curve lower. Dorsal rostral area, which is like the upper four to six ribs, that's going to increase during inhalation, which will reduce the front um, curvature of the, the, the thorax or the rib cage. With both of those actions happening simultaneously, you get circumferential expansion during inhalation and it is going to look relatively uniform. And that is normal circumstances of breathing. Obviously with compensatory mechanics, things change.